What is up, guys? I hope you're all doing well, being safe. Welcome back to another episode of the Texas Miler. I'm your host, Garrett Cortez. I uh, hope you're all doing well and uh, ready to watch another video of podcasts or of my podcast. Um, still don't have like a specific name for this little segment I'm adding to the channel or uh, going forward, but I think right now I just like the idea of being able to sit down talk to you guys and really give you guys my opinion my advice and some tools that I've really utilized throughout my high school my college and uh, going into my post-collegiate career um, that you may find useful you may not but I believe that sitting down and kind of talking about some things can really help you guys get to the next level or accomplish some goals that can really help you pursue so many things whether it's running or any other sports like that but um I, i'm really looking forward to continue and keep this going and sit down and talk to you guys about it but back to the topic at hand so today i'm actually going to be talking to you guys about goal setting and also how we can change our mindset and some tools that may be useful to change our approach this fall with everything going on and how we can use it to prepare for the winter and spring seasons coming forward um, because mostly a lot of conferences right now or especially at college are canceling or postponing fall sports already and maybe there's a few left that haven't but um, I know the ints are like for cross country at D1 uh, they've already canceled the uh, NCAA championship for cross so it's like you know it's it's tough. And then high school, you're actually still in luck, it seems, that you just have a delayed season right now, so that could be useful. And So it's really been a crazy year of anything. I mean, sports, life, everything. It's uh, really been a head-scratcher, and we're all kind of just ready for all this to end. But um, anyway, man, it seems like yesterday that it was spring break. I remember I was going on a I went down to Corpus with some of my teammates before all this, like everything shut down and everything started really picking up. Uh, we went down just to uh, hang out at one of our friend's house and kind of fish a little bit. And then we had a speed workout at night. And I remember we did a speed workout. I was doing like some call out speed work. And like right after that session, like things started shutting down. Like uh, I remember the message, the NBA season was postponed and I was like, what the heck? Like, okay, something's really happening. Like, what is going on that we aren't really getting the full information about? And then I remember we woke up the next morning and literally I thought it was like a dream because you see NCAA tournaments canceled, conference championships canceled. And then shortly after, I mean, the spring season was canceled right after that. And it's just like, what the heck is going on? I, it it felt so unreal and we kind of like looked at each other like there's no way this is happening like what the heck is going on and you know fast forward close to six months already and it's uh it's been a very interesting ride going through all this and really just trying to take care of ourselves and you know get through it and hopefully we find a cure for this real soon and so now like fall sports are really up in the air for uh, college, high school, and uh, really everybody. And it's just like, it, it is intense. And I, you know, I, I really do want fall sports to happen, but I know we need to make sure we have the best interests, interests of athletes, coaches, faculty, everything like that. And it's tough because uh, our conference actually just postponed fall sports, the Southland. And Man, I feel so bad for all my friends, my teammates that, you know, were really looking forward to competing this season for cross country to kind of get back to some normalcy a little bit and uh, already having the spring season gone and then now no cross country. It's just they're, they're bummed out about it. And I know we're all just trying to keep things optimistic and very... Uh, helpful as best we can and i know we're just ready to get back to practicing and you know get that back going and it's just it's it's tough i mean it's 
it is not easy. And now it's just kind of like for so many people, I know it's not just my friends and teammates and everyone else I know, but it's like, where do we go from here? How do we move forward from all of this when we don't have a season now? Or, you know, it's like, what, how do we, what do we do? And this is where I, you know, I don't have the perfect, I'm not saying it's a plan, but it's an idea that maybe can help you in your training uh, or how y'all approach training or just a couple ideas that can help make the difference and get you ready for when the winter and spring comes. And hopefully by then we'll be back to having seasons and everyone can compete and get back out on the track and racing because I know I'm looking forward to getting back and racing myself, but um, that way I can just give you guys my personal advice and my opinion and a lot of things like that, that may be helpful. And I hope it is. And I know with all this, it could really be unmotivating and just mentally draining because there's so much going on. It's been going on for so long now too. It's just like, what the heck? And then losing a season. But this is where as athletes, I mean, we already have to be able to adapt like a quick snap. You know, you, it sucks and it's not ideal at all. It's not what we were expecting at all, but we have to be able to adapt and we have to keep moving forward. That's the biggest thing. And we have to make sure we don't let it drag us down because that can affect you going into the winter sports and especially for the spring track season. And you don't want that to happen. So what you do right, well, I want to say right now, but what you do this fall will have a huge impact of how you perform and compete going forward uh go really going forward and we need to change our mindsets about that about this negative experience or ordeal and kind of turn it into a positive optimistic thing that we can really use to benefit ourselves and make us better not only as runners but as people and so, so if you still like for it's mainly for college you some of you may still have a season potentially i don't know how it's going to directly affect like eligibility and stuff like that yet but i know um if you don't have a season or they've already postponed your eligibility won't be affected but um since there are no ncaa champs i don't know how coaches and programs will go forward with that um for the ones that haven't canceled it uh, i guess it just depends on what what they're trying to do in the program so i mean take advantage of it i mean you're probably still going to train like cross country season is still happening a bit and you maybe have a few dual meets or stuff like that i don't know um a lot of things are still really up in the air but you know take advantage of it and it could be really fun um and for i guess for college <clears throat> for college if your season's already postponed canceled you know this is the time to really take advantage of a really really solid training block that can really get you prepped for the spring season and just a lot stronger and more efficient in training recovery and just how you overall perform and can really have some leaps and bounds of benefits into your future of running or competing whichever one and you know, this would be a really good time to add some new intensity into your training that in the fall you may not usually be able to add because you're preparing for cross country. You're preparing for, preparing for a state championship and uh, districts or trying to qualify at regionals and uh, NCAAs. And, you know, this is a good time where depending on your coach or your program, it could be a really good shot to add some new stuff and a different variety of training that can really get you a lot stronger and better prepared for the spring and kind of this larger training block can be used to prep you specifically for the spring season um depending on your coach but i know like programs could take this time to kind of bump up mileage that you know you probably wouldn't try to do in the season because it can really be bumping up mileage is tough on the body you need to be careful and progress it but sometimes but with this, it gives you a chance to add that little intensity and that new adaptation that may benefit you as a runner, depending on your style. 
and really be important to your training. And also, you can kind of take this time to make training really, really fun. You don't want to do the same type of stuff over and over and over again because, yes, it could be good for training and stuff like that, but then you kind of get like a mental drain out of it. You kind of get mental, just tired of it mentally, and that can really be negative on the athletes and the training because then it's just it's not viewed as important and it's just won't have much as much benefit as trying to keep the training as fun and so that's where you kind of come up with like cool ways to make some games out of workouts or strength training and stuff like that i I know for us like one of the most the best things we love to do is play volleyball with the medicine ball We'll play it uh, between like the football goalposts and you'll have two teams on or a team on each side. And it's just pretty much volleyball trying to haul the uh, medicine ball over. And then, you know, if the ball hits the ground, that's a point. And I mean, that's so fun to play. I, we all love playing that. And oh, excuse me, but it, it's so hilarious and just a lot of fun. And you're working out and you don't even realize it. Um but it's just, it's a cool thing to add and anyone could add something like that or just other, there's so many different things out there to try and just, it depends on the coach and what you're trying to achieve in that session or that workout. Excuse me. And it, it's really cool to add and do stuff like that. Can really That can really keep us as athletes engaged or focused and really just having fun in training. And then high school, I mean, Right now, you guys are in luck. The season's just delayed a little bit. I mean, I think the start date, I know for UIL, it's like September 7th. And I think that's for like 5 or 6A. 5A, I think it's like 6A, uh, those other divisions. And I think 1A starts a little earlier, but or I'm not too sure on the dates. But, I mean, state championships for y'all isn't until this early December now. So it's like, you have a whole other whole another month to get another good block of training in or really just get prepared for that and you don't usually see well you don't see that at all um during the cross country season so for those of you that didn't probably didn't train like you should have in the summer um you got a chance to catch up now and get back into the arena and get back into shape where you can be able to compete and do whatever you're trying to achieve because you know this is a good time to get back into shape so take advantage of it um usually you don't get that but and this can actually kind of help those that are kind of more prepared like later in the season to compete uh where you know you kind of just progress and progress each throughout the season and now that you get another month you can kind of get yourself even better by the time that those districts come around and regionals and area and uh, especially states so i mean it's it's it sucks that it's delayed a little bit and it's going to be colder uh depending on your region but you know some of you may benefit from that i know some people love to race in the cold some people don't but looks like that's the route we're going and then you know this kind of later season is going to be beneficial for those that are trying to hit those PRs and earn a scholarship or walk on spot and try to solidify their name and their who they are so they can go to the next level and really achieve such high goals that we set for ourselves. Now to like the main segment of what I really wanted to touch on uh, based on what I've used is goal setting a little bit. Uh, goal setting is so, so important to planning a season, staying on task and focused and can really just help you in times when things get rough of why you're doing some of the things you're doing and like why you put yourself through hard training, why you put yourself through the long miles sometimes. And trust me, they're so, so important and can help you really see how far you come from the start of the season to the very end. And it's so cool to see. It's such a huge relief when you look back on everything that you wrote down and you're, whether you scratch off when you complete something or and just see how 
stuff like this will keep you on task and really help you progress and get better yourself each and every year. So, I mean, goals are a great way to help you stay on track and use and we that we use as guidelines really and every season you should go into uh with a plan uh with a list of goals of what you're trying to accomplish that season because without that you're really just going into a year kind of aimless and unaware of what's going to happen or what you're trying to do and training is not going to be as effective as it should be for you guys because you're like i don't know what i'm trying to do or you don't know what you're trying to accomplish or reach for and it's just like you can't keep track of how you're progressing or can't keep um that mindset of what i'm trying to do and that's so important especially in those hard sessions and um just kind of monitor monitoring how you perform and train each week so that's why goal setting is so important and just really help you bring out the better yourself better of yourself and really keep you on task to reach those goals um and you know with this fall kind of being up in the air you know and a lot of changes there's going to be change of goals a little bit how you make goals this fall are going to be very different for how you make goals in the spring or how you usually would and so that's the biggest thing so before i like dive into how i set up my goal sheet going into a season um for class I actually had to read a book called Grit by Angela Duckworth. It's a phenomenal story or phenomenal book. I think uh, any athlete should really get their hands on it and take a, take a look at it and read it. It has some great information, some great stories that was so helpful that um, I could utilize. It was kind of what was really cool to see is how so many professional athletes, performers, like top talent, they – think a lot in how they process things how they prepare for things and it was really cool to see how those elite people like utilize stuff like that and tools and uh, so many different things that like i'm definitely going to reread it again when i get the chance after i read through a couple of books i already purchased and need to read um but it has some great stuff and one particular story that stood out to me um was a when she talks about Pete Carroll in uh, the Seattle Seahawks organization and how when he, as a coach, he needed something to lead the entire organization, the players, the staff, him, the coaches, all that, and how they can utilize these goals to get them to sort of be the best team in the NFL. And, I mean, it, it's worked. I mean, Seattle Seahawks are, for the past couple years have been a really solid team under Pete Carroll and a lot of those players and what was really cool is how they talk about he made a hierarchy of goals so you had your highest goal your middle medium goal and then your lowest goals and kind of just reading about that and how they utilize that and how it motivated the players and the entire staff to work and work and work each and every day that they were in practice at the games and everything and how it really helps you stay focused and ta on task and really helps motivate the entire program and organization you're part of. That was really something cool to read. And what I found really awesome was how I could really relate to what Pete Carroll and what she was talking about in the book because without even realizing it, I've done similar things with my approach to seasons and training that – um, especially with goals, um, it may not have been as organized like a hierarchy, but when you look at them, you can kind of see the highest goals. You can see the in-between goals and then the lowest goals that are going to get you to the middle and to the highest goals. And it was really, really awesome to kind of see how even without realizing it, I've kind of modeled in a philosophy like that to a phenomenal coaching uh, or foot to a phenomenal coach like Pete Carroll and a lot of those athletes out there that really take time to plan and how they approach their their seasons and their competition and their performances. It's really, really awesome to read. And I I tell you guys, you really need to check that book out and kind of 
get to read that story. And and one thing like that that they talk about is how like each tier of that hierarchy is so important.